Chef Peter Merriman is one of the pioneers of the movement by restaurants in Hawaii to use locally grown foods. He says it started out slowly, but now there's lots of opportunity for cooperation between farmers and chefs. He recommends not listening to conventional wisdom. In, in the early 1980s, it was a known fact in Hawaii, a known fact that you could not do vine ripened tomatoes. And Aaron Lee came into our kitchen one day, and, and this is the early stages of us trying to develop relationship with farmers and so forth. And Aaron Lee came into our, our restaurant one day, and she had this basket of beautifully grown basil and, and the other different herbs. And that was the first thing that all the farmers were doing, was the basil and the easy things to do. So I actually, even though it was the early stages, we had enough of that. Well, I got in a discussion with Erin, and it was obviously she was a very intelligent and capable woman. So I said to her, hey, you know what, Erin, I have enough basil. What about vine-ripened tomatoes? And four months later, she was standing in my kitchen with a basket full of vine-ripened tomatoes. Today, the rest is history. <laughs> Today, that's an industry in Waimea, and that is a tribute to Erin Lee and all the farmers who who are these pioneers and they're not taking no for an answer and they're figuring out ways to do things. What they're actually doing is they're figuring out how to say yes to the customers. Because the more sophisticated dining public that's coming to Hawaii was demanding a vine ripened tomato. The old cardboard pieces were no longer good enough. So they had to figure out how to say yes. And the way Erin did it was she moved up to above where the fruit fly stings the animal and then she put cloth in a rainy area, she put cloth over top of her tomatoes and waters it from the roots. It just hadn't been thought of. But it was very fortunate for many uh, farmers in Waimea because as the decline of the export flower business in Waimea, they were able to supplement that and add tomatoes. So we have a big industry now in Waimea of tomatoes. Real early days when, when Tain Data and the farmers in the Kealake Kua area were um, growing for us. So that's when we very first started doing things. And Tain organized these group of really small farmers that were all at different elevations. And he would bring me a seed catalog and I'd go through it and I'd highlight things that we could use in the restaurant that this is what our customers would want. He'd take this back and he'd say, okay, here's this crop and it grows well at this elevation, so I'll go ask this farmer to do this. And this is in this crop. And, and he would show which ones we could get and which elevation. He would organize it, get the guys at the right elevations in the right microclimate to grow it and then bring it to us. And I think this is really important because it, it is, again, figuring out a way to connect directly to the consumer, to the tourists at that point, because we were servicing primarily tourists in the restaurants at that point. And that was really good, too, because we were able to charge a premium. If you get out of the commodities market and do these real nice items, we as chefs are willing to pay more for a very impact item, a high impact item, something that guests is really going to impact the guest experience. So these small farmers could have their, their pounds per acre go up, just have small acres. The total pounds produced for every year was nothing compared to sugar, but the dollars start to get close because we pay so much more than we do for sugar. Well, we feel that the, the farmers are absolutely integral to our restaurant, our restaurant concept. Merriman's restaurant is nothing more than the final link in the agricultural chain. And we also feel that the products that are grown in Hawaii are superior to those grown anywhere else. It may be more expensive to grow things here, but what you do grow can taste much better. So that's what we encourage our farmers to do. And really, our, our farmers are our stars. They're so, we, they're so important to us that we put their pictures on the wall. Uh, we honor every one of those people. We just think they're the ones that make us successful. And with that, I encourage our farmers to think of m not me as their customers, but the person sitting at the table in the dining room, the person who's having dinner as their customer. So if they can give our waiter a message, a story attached to their item that that waiter can talk about at the table, then they're going to help sell more of that item. You could grow an ordinary everyday potato, but if that potato tastes great and then you have the, the, the chef and the waiter come up and visit you on the farm and that waiter can go and talk to the customer and say, oh, these, these potatoes were grown by Joe and Shirley and, and it's on this farm and it's over here and tell them the whole story. That brings, brings life and makes a connection from the, from the consumer to the farmer and that's really adding a lot of value to that overall experience. So the, the point being that the diner is the customer for the farmer, not me the chef.
One of the, one of the big reasons that small restaurants like Merriman's um, are the leaders in, in using locally raised products is because we're, we're nimble. We can adapt quickly. We can run out of something halfway through the night and change it. Whereas a big hotel has a much more difficult time doing that. And um, I think that's been really important so that we can work with our farmers. As long as they let us know they're going to run out or something going to last so long, then, then we're fine. We can work and, 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 and adapt to it. And so I would encourage many farmers to go first to high-end small restaurants because they're, they're more nimble and able to work with you. Um, but sometimes even we blow it and, and the farmer has to come to us and explain to us how to do it. And one, a good example of that is Chuck Borner at Ono Farm Sound in uh, Kipahulu who is growing all this um, wonderful organic fruit and organic coffee and a bunch of other things. But he actually came up to be on a radio show with me one time. He was a guest on the radio show. And so he was on the radio show and the show was over. And then at the end he said, well, wait a second, Pete, I'm not letting you go. You know, I, I brought a big box full of fruit. And I'm, okay, you know, so we taste all this different fruit. It was all incredible. But I'm going to, you know, what am I going to do, Chuck? I mean, some days you got this, some days you got that. He said, well, why don't you just have your guy call us and we'll tell you what we have available that week. I said, well, okay, we'll give that a try. And so what we do now is we call Chuck every week and he says, I have this, this, and this available. Our chef orders so many pounds of each and that goes on a fruit platter. And this fruit platter is, it says, organic Kibahulu fruit from Ono Farms. You can't get this on the mainland. It says that right, <laughs> right on our menu, which is the whole point. And this is the only restaurant I've ever worked in where we actually could sell fruit platters. We sell an incredible amount of fruit platters. Not only do we sell a lot of fruit platters, we charge way more than you normally charge for a fruit platter. And our waiters are excited about selling a fruit platter because they're able to turn the customer on to an experience they can't get anywhere else. They've never had anywhere else before. That customer is going to go away excited because, wow, I had organic fruit grown down there by Hana, and it's, and it's really good stuff, and I've never even seen some of those fruits before. The whole point of buying Hawaii is Hawaii. It's not the cost factor, because land is so expensive, labor is so expensive in Hawaii. Everything grown in Hawaii costs more to grow and to buy, but everything grown in Hawaii can taste better. So the chef has to be willing to recognize that fact and be able to support that farmer. And, and one of the things that we've said from the very beginning is that we want our farmers to make money. We don't want that. We don't want to drive them down. Chefs have a bad habit of trying to talk everybody down on their price, and the farmers will sometimes give in because they're not as accustomed to dealing in that sort of a negotiation. But we, what we'd prefer to do is go to a farmer and say, "Okay, give us a year-round price, and we'll we'll just set, set keep it fixed at that price year-round, and then we can work it into our." Our formulas where we know how to make money at it, you make money at it, we're all better off. But when the price of the mainland competitor goes way underneath that, we still won't desert the farmer. We're going to continue to support the farmer because we want him there when the price of that mainland one goes way back up. And throughout the truth is, throughout the course of the year, we pay more for the Hawaii grown product than the mainland product because the commodity stuff, but the quality is worth every penny more that we pay for it. It's all about quality. That's all. That's, that's what Hawaii Hawaii farmers have to think: quality, 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 quality. We're not in a commodities market. 